Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister, sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. He who you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. <coughs> After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Now Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been, been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who, have opened, who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there has been a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you will always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. His hands and his feet were bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <coughs> when I was um, asked to give the sermon today, Nobody told me about the competition <laughs> with Phantom of the Opera across the street and the delightful kids here. Who wants a sermon? <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> because I'm 
I'm trying to keep my promise. Let us pray. Almighty God, breathe on us the power of your spirit that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? I want to make clear today before we get into the message that this part of the message is part two. Part one was given at the early service. And I want to thank those who were invited to come back for part two. Not too many did. <laughs> so I'll just thank, let's see, John, <laughs> Kendall, John, Chris, anyway. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really delightful to be here and I'm honored to have been asked I've always um, really had the desire to give the sermon at Grace Lutheran. I'm very uh, familiar with the church, with so many of you. And uh, so finally I was invited to preach and all I can say is it's about time. <laughs> I was introduced and you know who I am. I'm Jack Lewis, and I was born in Bellingham, Washington, and that's the area where your intern John and his wife Krista were raised, beautiful area, lots of good people come from there, in fact some really fine people. Then our family moved to the town of Anacortes, which is on Fidelgo Island in the San Juan Islands. And it was a town of um, fishermen and guys who worked in shingle mills and uh, lumber yards and the veneer plant and the pulp mill, which my dad ran. And uh, it, was a, it was really a f great place to be raised. Then I went to the University of Washington, so I'm a Husky, and uh, then I went to Luther Seminary. And it's interesting because uh, our family has really uh, frequented Luther Seminary a great deal. I went to the seminary, graduated in 1961. And my brother went to the seminary and he graduated in 1967. And uh, then Emily, went to the seminary and got her degree in, in 1991. And then uh, my daughter Caroline and your candle and uh, Caroline's husband Mark all graduated in 1994. And Emily's mother went to the seminary. So it's kind of like the Sopranos, it's the family business but it's a pretty good business. In um, 1998, I visited uh, here in uh, Dawson for the first time after Emily and Kendall and the two boys, Hannah wasn't born yet, moved from the serenity of Montana to the wilds of Minnesota. And uh, I enjoyed Dawson from the very first, it's a great town. 
You have all kinds of things going for you. You have a wonderful school district. You have good sports teams. Uh, people here support the community. And uh, I'd say it was a great place to raise kids and even to stay here. And Dawson has had its difficulties. Every town has its difficulties. But in the midst of all of those difficulties, you are resilient. Some of the difficulties in the past have been your floods, which have been really disastrous. Last summer, another difficulty arose when 12th Street was repaved. And that ended the bumps that I was so used to that I hardly know that I'm coming into town anymore. And then, of course, Dubers closed. I, I really enjoyed going to Dubers, talking to Carol, and buying things that Dubers that you probably couldn't buy anywhere else. And then, most of all, and most of you will remember this, there was a really devastating event when one night, fire destroyed the draw bar. I really, I'm amazed that you got over that. <laughs> but it's a strong populace. And then in the midst of Dawson is this community of Grace Lutheran. And Grace Lutheran, I think, is a very unique congregation. I'm prejudiced because my family's here, Kendall and Emily and Zachary, Noah, Hannah, but I think there are elements of the life that you share together which are really exemplary. It's a community of faith that has made and continues to make an impact in Dawson that is remarkable. And I would say that if an individual wanted to see what the focus of Dawson really was, I would say that it's here at Grace Lutheran. Grace Lutheran is a place where you have heard over and over again the words of life. I am the light of the world, Jesus said. And that light shines in the midst of an incredible darkness in a world that seems to fall over itself in trying to bring on darkness. I am the bread of life, Jesus said, the sustenance, the nurture, the food of life. And today we will experience that in a very powerful way when we come to receive bread and wine. I am the door of the sheep. And you know exactly what that means here at Grace. It means that in Jesus Christ, God has led you into his family through the door, through the portal, on the avenue of grace. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And the good shepherd knows his own, and his own know him. And you know who the shepherd is, Jesus. And you know that he knows you. And by the grace of God, through the Spirit, you hear his voice. I am the way and the truth and the life. And in that proclamation, you throughout the years in Grace Lutheran Church have in been enabled and ennobled and strengthened to proclaim and to share this way, this truth, this life that you celebrate in Jesus Christ. When Lazarus died, 
His family was in deep grief. Jesus had delayed his coming rather than going immediately when he heard that Lazarus was ill. He delayed so that, he said, it may be an avenue in which the glory of God might be revealed. And finally, when he came to Bethany, Martha, Lazarus' sister, came out and she said, Lord, where have you been? What on earth were you doing? Why were you twiddling your thumbs? Why didn't you come when you heard Lazarus was sick? Isn't that exactly what you or I have said at some point? Where are you, God? What have you been doing? Don't you listen? Am I not a sheep of the fold? And Jesus said, Martha, your brother will rise again. And Jesus then said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And Martha said with conviction and urgency and the vibrancy of faith, a newfound faith, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And in that confession, in that declaration of Jesus as the resurrection and life, and Martha saying, I believe, we are focused today, your Stewardship Sunday, on what it is to be a child of God. It is to begin in faith, to live in faith, to share in faith, to give in faith, to die in faith, in the sure and certain hope of eternal life. Jesus then went to the tomb, and Lazarus had been there for four days. And he faced then the ugliness, the trial, the horrible odor, the destructiveness of death. And he had the stone taken away from the tomb, and he said with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out, but his hands and his feet and his face, his eyes and ears were wrapped in cloths. And Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. Today, Jesus is among us, and he is not only proclaiming that he is resurrection in the life, He is proclaiming this so that we know that this resurrection in life isn't just then, it is now. And that now involves all who we are and all what we do in Jesus Christ. It is the stewardship of life that we live out, that we speak, that we share, that we give generously our faith. Lots of times on Stewardship's Sunday you, Sunday, you hear about time and talent and treasure, and those are very, very important items when we consider giving. We give our time as people of God. We use our talents as people of God. We share our treasure as people of God so that others may know the vibrancy of the resurrection and the life. 
And so today, really, Jesus is saying to us, come out. Come out of the tomb. John, come out. And Jack, come out. And Kendall, come out. And Cody, come out. And then he says to the whole of the congregation, use your time and your talent and your treasure to unbind them, to take away the cloths of death and guilt and anxiety and envy and resentment and everything that keeps you from the vibrant life in Jesus Christ. That is what stewardship entails. Emily will remember that almost, it was 40 years ago, I can't believe it, uh, as a person who's only 39, something actually happened 40 years ago. I had a spinal fusion at uh, Stanford Hospital in Palo Alto. And in those days, that was a really major deal. And, and I was in the hospital for almost three weeks. Emily was not quite um, five, and she and her sisters and her mother came over and they'd bounce on my bed and we'd watch Gumby together and all kinds of other exciting things. And finally, before I went home, I participated in what they called casting day. And that's when I was uh, casted with plaster from my neck to my, well, you know. <laughs> and so I lived in this plaster cast for about four months. And believe me, I looked like a turtle. I felt like a turtle. I walked like a duck. I, I really didn't walk. I just sort of waddled. Even stepping off of a curve was a major issue. I didn't want to fall, and nobody was around to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. It was really a difficult time. And then I went back to Stanford, and the doctor and the technicians cut the cast open, spread it apart, and set me free. And it was like being reborn. I had life again. I could do what I wanted to do without the restriction and the confinement of that heavy plaster. Well, God's Holy Spirit is among us today, and he's enabling us to hear the words of Jesus, come out and be unbound. Be set free so that you can go into the world with who you are, with whom God has made you to be, and to do the will of the Lord. There's a story of a man who was dissatisfied with his life. And so he joined a brotherhood. And it was a group of brothers who were committed to silence, to do good work, to prayer. And he thought he would find himself in that community. Every 10 years, the brothers could speak two words with the abbot. And so this fellow worked really hard for 10 years. He did what he was told to do, and he was then told after the 10 years to go to see the abbot, and the abbot said, brother, you have two words. What do you want to say? And the fellow said, bed hard. And the abbot said, well, you know, this isn't the Hilton. This is a, a place where you dedicate your life to the Lord. Go back and Let's see how you do in the next 10 years. So he worked hard, he prayed, he did what he was supposed to do. And after 10 years, he went back to the abbot, and the abbot said, Brother, 
what would you like to say? Two words. And the fellow said, food bad. So the bed was hard and the food was bad. And the abbot said, well, I know it's difficult, but try again. So another 10 years were spent in dedicated work, in doing good, in praying. And then after the 10 years were up, he went back to the abbot and the abbot said, well, after these 10 years, what do you have to say, brother? And he said, I quit. And the abbot said, I'm not surprised. You've done nothing but complain since you got here. <laughs> we have a decision to make. We're not people who have vowed to silence. But today, we hear the word of the Lord challenging us to do the work of the Lord. And there are just two words. Those words are, I believe. For when we say, I believe, then we begin to live and we share the light of the world and the bread of life and the shepherd and the resurrection and the life. But it's really something that I can't say for you that only you can say for yourself. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever believes and lives in me will never die. Do you believe this? <laughs> 